Hey guys, it's Stephanie here. So I want to get on here real quick and give you guys a great idea for planting a flower bed that gets morning sun until about one in the afternoon. I live in a 6B climate, so I don't get a lot of humidity and it gets nearly 103 degrees in the summer. So it's really hot when it hits summer. And so these plants are really great for a west facing flower bed, but they're also under a tree. So they get that afternoon shade. And so they like the part shade. So let's go take a look at this flower bed and some of the combinations. It's really bright right now. Excuse the mess behind my river. I haven't quite had the time to get to weeding that and cleaning it up. But anyway, so I had planted this flower bed maybe two years ago. I killed a bunch of dogwoods behind this Japanese maple. It was just loaded with red twig dogwoods. I happen to love the water and the moisture. As you can see, I have a beautiful river that comes through my yard. I kind of split it with my neighbors. It is such a beautiful gem. And so they had planted all these these bushes and they be I killed them off in one of my videos it was really effective but they had roots that just went through this entire area and so my plants were really really struggling because they were just root bound so this year I had to remove everything and I had to go ahead and <laughs> hand till it with a shovel and just dig up all those roots pull them out make this soil a little bit softer and so now I can start planting in it again Lesson learned is do it right the first time, but it kind of wraps around here. It's fairly large. It's about eight feet deep on each side. And right now it's getting a lot of sunlight, but you can see these willows here. And at one o'clock they start to provide all of that shade and they don't get these flower bed. This flower bed doesn't get any more sun for the rest of the day. Okay, I'm gonna take it from this angle because I just noticed my shadow is in there. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's take a look at these first plants that I have in the ground. So this right here is the wildberry coral bells, also known as hookera. I'm gonna bring it in this shade so we can look at it a little bit better and get it out of that sunlight. But look how beautiful this is. It has such gorgeous purple leaves. It even has a subtle hint of this metallic, metallic-y shine to it. Here is my August moon hostas. So these get pretty darn big. They can get up to 42 inches wide. I'm gonna put three of them right here. So I think they're gonna look gorgeous next to these coral bells. So right here is a different variety of hosta. So I have been dividing and transplanting these hostas. So they're really small right now throughout my yard, but this is the June hosta. And this is actually a more sun tolerant hosta. So I could actually put this in the full sun, but this is in a part shade location. And then I divided one tiny little one over here. This is my other June hosta. So this was, half the size last week so it's growing and transplanting really well I just had to kind of cut out the tattered leaves I did dry let them dry out a little bit too much I got too distracted with a million other projects and forgot to water them so right here this tiny little plant is a bare root biacoba that I planted it's the biacoba geranium it's mostly white with a little bit of a tinge of pink to it but it will fill in nice throughout all the edge of this border. So the geraniums are perfect for masses or for border edging, and they look great with hostas and foxglove. Okay, so the next plants I purchased was three of these Spanish Peaks foxglove. It blooms early summer and it gets these cute little rosy peak bells. So it looks very similar to the biennials. It's not quite as big. It only gets, right here it says 12 inches to 12 inches wide, but it definitely gets bigger than that. It's gonna be more like 18 to 24 inches tall and wide. It doesn't need a lot of moisture and it can dry out. <laughs> so that's definitely what I need right now. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but I love foxgloves and hostas together. I know in my climate, the hummingbirds are really gonna like this for nectar and it's gonna have a lot of bees. So I'm excited to enjoy the wildlife. So I went to the nursery and I did not intend on buying any of these flowers. And of course I got suckered in and here I came home with all these new plants, but I did need to design that flower bed. So it's working out. This is kind of a new or improved variety of the David Phlox in my opinion. And it's called backlight. It has these beautiful white flowers. So Phlox gets nice and full. This gets about 24 to 30 inches tall and wide. This is a late summer to fall blooming plant, so I'm going to have some added color when all these other plants have kind of faded a little bit. The fox glove, the coral bells, and the hostas, and geranium. But it gives you those panicle heads, kind of similar to the hydrangeas. Like most plants, you can cut them down after their first flush, and they will start to rebloom later in the season. But with fox, once they start to fade, that first bloom, just fluff them off like this and then they'll start to produce that second set of blooms so they bloom a really long time and you get that late season color <laughs> hey there 
<laughs> these can actually handle the full sun too so they're a pretty adaptable plant so i know i'm showing you guys a lot of perennials my husband likes to tease me because every perennial is my favorite but for real these next two are some of my favorite i cannot wait to get these anemones into the ground anemone i always like to say anemone but the right term is anemone. I get corrected every time I go to the nursery and I say something wrong. I don't know if you guys have that same experience. But anyway, look how cute these flowers are. They're really cool plants because they handle the shade and the part shade. If you live in cooler climates, the full sun would be okay. But <laughs> I just love having these in a mass. The bush itself doesn't get very tall. It gets nice and bushy. The foliage is pretty before the flowers come out, but the flowers sit on about one to two foot stems. And so that's what really gives them their height. They get 30 to 36 inches tall. And what's great about this flower is they self seed. So they'll naturalize and they look great in a large area. Just so that the flowers, since they're kind of small and dainty, it gives it a much more dramatic effect. So I'm gonna put this in the ground next to the phlox and I think it's gonna be really pretty. There is one thing that I want you to take notice here. It says grow in fertile humus rich soil. So I'm gonna have to supplement water this plant, but that's okay, it's worth the effort. Okay, so this is the last Set of flowers i'm going to be planting in this flower bed i have been trying to search for this plant all over and i finally got my hands on it is one of the nurseries that was near me they always provide the most unique varieties and they are just on top of their game but look at this flower isn't this a stunner this is estrantia it is such a cool plant and i'm going to plant seven of these all along that flower bed edge so this is the masterpiece variety it has cute little pin cushion blooms Kind of reminds me of fireworks, but I really like this masterpiece variety because it has these variegated leaves. So when it's not in bloom, that provides a lot of fun interest. This variety gets about 16 to 24 inches tall. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these perennials back in that flower bed. So this particular variety of anemone blooms in fall. So as everything else is starting to fade, this starts to pop up. And so I'm gonna have color in that flower bed all season long. I don't know if you can tell, but look at all that cotton that is flowing in the air. It's from a cotton tree that's coming from the west but it looks like snowflakes it's actually really really beautiful but i'm just grateful that i don't have allergies because if i did i'd be going nuts right now look at all of those wispies all right i'm gonna go ahead and get those coral bells in the ground i have three of those fox gloves swooping around the hosta i actually have five fox that i'm gonna put in the ground they definitely benefit from grouping and then those Astrantia, there's actually seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's gonna be such a stunner. And then right there, I have three of those anemone. So I think with those anemone, since they are self sowers and they spread pretty well and will naturalize, I kind of want them to take over this big chunk of area. So naturally that will happen. I think it will look really pretty. Okay, let's get these in the ground. in the ground it's very necessary because today was 90 degrees and after it gets really hot it's not so good for perennials to put them in the ground so I'm gonna give them a nice watering so my sister-in-law was calling me the other day and I had just planted her a new flower bed if you want to see that check it out it's on my more recent video and if you want to see the update of this flower bed which I'm really excited about consider subscribing because I will be updating all the new flower beds that I have planted and what they're gonna look like in the next couple years anyway my sister-in-law had just recently called and some of her flower are starting to wilt so she was really nervous she didn't know what was going on and basically when you put those new perennials in the ground they're gonna need a lot more watering at the beginning until those roots start to spread and establish so I just told her you need to water them unfortunately one of her perennials got a little too overly dry so the leaves went crispy but she can cut those 
few crispy leaves out and underneath they'll start growing back. But the other one just plumped right back up with some water. So check it, make sure it's moist about two inches deep. And if it starts to feel dry, water it again. It takes about two to four weeks until they really get nice and established. So at the beginning, you have to baby them a little bit. Okay, there is my three anemone. I know they're really small right now, but I just had to take one last look at this estrancia. Look at the sun glowing on that. Isn't it just spectacular? And then there's all my flocks going to be really really beautiful once this starts to fill in so i'm not going to finish this flower bed completely in this video the last thing i got to do is start weeding it all i'm going to put down some more mulch for that weed control and to keep the moisture in i think i'm going to landscape this other side next year i'm not going to get to it this year and then i just got to give all my plants a nice deep soaking and give them a little bit of the espoma plant tone fertilizer thanks so much for watching guys i hope you got some great ideas for that morning sun afternoon shade and particularly hot climates. This was really fun to do. I'm gonna go inside now because I'm really sweaty and I'm getting really hot and I'm definitely dehydrated. I don't drink enough water when I'm out here. Anyways, have a great day gardening and we'll talk to you later. Bye.